a Dr. Peter Jostling. He is a biochemist and he's worked for over 25 years in the international health food and supplement area. He's written several books. He's authored and contributed numerous scientific articles. Uh, he is well known in the United Kingdom as um, a leading expert in natural medicine. He has uh, worked in several areas and written studies on a wide variety of natural products such as vitamin C, black elderberry, magnesium, allicin from garlic. Uh, he has just designed so many products that have been incredibly useful that we are delighted to have him here today to talk about allergies. So welcome, Dr. Jocelyn. Thank you very much indeed. It's uh, indeed an honor to be invited to, uh, along today to talk to you. and. Um, I just hope you can understand my quaint English accent. We understand you just fine. And if you could speak up just a tiny little bit, you're a little soft, uh, but, and we had a couple folks say they were having a little trouble hearing you, but otherwise everything's just fine. Okay, right. Well, in that case, I think it's probably best that we start off. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is probably one of my most favorite um, compounds that I've ever been involved with over 25 years in the health food uh, industry all over the world. Um, it's such a simple solution and it works so well uh, that it, there really is nothing to sneeze about. It really is a very safe and effective natural allergy relief compound. And um, from my point of view, if you have something that's really simple and it works, then it's much easier to better bring that to a wider audience and they understand exactly why the compound can give them relief. So today's talk is really all about allergy and in particular seasonal allergic rhinitis or hay fever as it's more commonly known. And unfortunately it's, it's a very common disease. And for those of you who are not quite sure exactly what causes it and how it happens, normally it's an allergy to something in the air. So it'll be pollen from the trees or pollen from the grass or pollen from flowers that basically comes into your nose, your ears, your eyes and your mouth. And once it gets inside that area, that is the window to your immune system. So what happens is the allergens come in and they land in your normal mucus and they penetrate deep down into the layers of the skin and they react with various antibodies and that causes uh, an allergic response from your lungs. And if you think about it, all your lungs really want is fresh, clean air. And if your nose is unable to filter out all of these allergens, then inevitably as you breathe, you will take these allergens back down into the lungs eventually. And what will happen is you'll release histamine to try and get rid of these uh, allergens. And by the relief of histamine, you cause all sorts of side effects like um, that runny nose, that itchiness in the back of your throat, a rash sometimes. Um, it obviously constricts your respiratory airways. Um, basically, your blood vessels do expand and you get edema. And you increase the amount of mucus that's released from your nose. So yes, your nose starts to run. And that's a classic um, allergic reaction to usually a pollen from the air, but as we now know and have known for, for many years, allergies can be caused by all sorts of different things. That can include things like latex, for example. Um, it can include different types of jewelry. Some people can't wear yellow gold, for example. Uh, but the other big area that's very, very common, as we'll see in a few minutes, is what we call animal dander. So if you have a cat or a dog or a rabbit or a guinea pig, uh, or anything that has a, a furry uh, nature to it, then you can be allergic to the to the small amounts of fur that the animal releases. Um, it can be an, an allergy to plants. It can be an allergy to foods. It can be an allergy to medication. And of course, we all know about uh, nut and shellfish allergies, which can be actually deadly if you don't know about it. So it's very important that we understand if we have an allergy to something. Um, and obviously, you know, there are things like bee stings. Some people won't react at all. Some people react really, really badly. And the same is true with uh, uh, bites and, and uh, stings from other insects and animals as well. Um, for example, with flea bites, some people respond dramatically, get massive, big 
wheels on their skin. But some, uh, we always say, who don't have sweet blood, uh, don't really react much at all. Um, but generally today, I'm going to be talking mostly about animal dander and pollen and dust inhalation, because these are major problems uh, across the world. And it's estimated that in every country in the world, around about 18% of people will be allergic to things uh, that are airborne, so pollen uh, and, and uh, flower pollen and grass, grass uh, pollen, etc. So in the United States, where you, you guys are all uh, listening, uh, we reckon there are probably 50 million people who, are, who have nasal allergies. And that comes from the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. So those figures are probably an underestimate. Um, and the CDC suggests that about 17 million uh, people are diagnosed with hay fever. I think that's definitely an underestimate. I would expect the number to be almost double that in the United States. Um, obviously, there'll be hot spots around the country. But as we'll see at the end of this presentation, um, all across the United States, there are different types of trees, different types of pollens. And that would mean, even if you're moving around the state, you could be in an area all year round where you would be allergic to something in the air. So I think 17.6 million is definitely an, an under diagnosis. But nonetheless, it's a lot of people. Um, it's also estimated that around 10 million adults and children uh, who have pets are actually allergic to those pets. So imagine uh, the trauma of having two or three cats or a couple of dogs and not really being able to pet them uh, and sit with them uh, in front of the TV in the evening because you keep sneezing all of the time. Not a very pleasant situation to be in. Uh, so you can see that this is potentially a major problem in the United States. And they suggest that about 13 million visits to physician offices and hospital outpatient departments are basically due to what we call allergic rhinitis. So that doesn't cover um, asthma or eczema or ectopic eczema or uh, different types of rhinitis. It's just purely and simply allergic rhinitis. So when you add all of these conditions together, the numbers are really very, very significant. And that's why if you look at the pharmaceutical industry, there are literally dozens and dozens of antihistamines, anticholinergics. There are dozens of uh, inhaled steroids. There are huge numbers of inhaled um, liquids that are meant to be decongestant um, and, and anti-allergic. But of course, uh, with any pharmaceutical, there are side effects. And the side effect profiles are quite substantial in, in certain aspects. So as we've just said, antihistamines, decongestants, anticholinergics, combinations of all of these drugs are used to treat hay fever or seasonal allergic rhinitis. Now, the original group of drugs that were first invented were the anticholinergics, and they obviously block the action of acetylcholine. That's a, a chemical messenger. By doing that, they decrease mucus production, so your nose doesn't run so much. Um, but unfortunately, acetylcholine is necessary for normal function of your body, so uh, and in particular, the neurological system. So the side effect profile of these particular type of drugs is very substantial, so much so that even today, as you can see from the next slide, in 2015, there was another paper published in JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, that showed that cumulative use of strong anticholinergics uh, and the incidence of dementia so the longer we use these drugs, the more we realize how toxic they are to our bodies. Now, they may give some relief in terms of seasonal allergic rhinitis, but at what cost uh, do we really want to compromise our long-term health for what might be just a very short-term gain? And this is why the, the cholinergics were really uh, pretty much dismissed in terms of treating um, seasonal allergic rhinitis about 15, no, 20, 25 years ago, really, when antihistamines came out. Now, oh, sorry, I've gone a little bit too soon there. I'm saving the best for a couple of minutes, if you I apologize. <laughs> but the other group that's commonly used are, of course, the antihistamines. And in the old days, antihistamines were incredibly uh, tiring. They would cause you to fall asleep almost instantly. 
And so for young people, uh, for middle age, for elderly people, these were not an ideal type of drug. They might work quite efficiently, they might control your hay fever, your allergic reaction, but you did get very, very tired. So in the last oh, 10, 12 years or so, the drug industry has spent billions on um, research and development of what they call non-sedating antihistamines. Now, they call them that, but of course that is a barefaced lie, because even in today's modern world, we know that these drugs still cause tiredness, irritability, and they are not perfect. So what we're really looking for is something that can control the symptoms of hay fever, like sneezing, like a runny nose, like uh, that sore, itchy throat, like feeling tired, like having your eyes watering, feeling bunged up, congested all of the time, but without the side effect profile that you see from most uh, modern and indeed nearly all old-fashioned pharmaceutical drugs. And that is really what you have with uh, cellulose. Now, this is what we call a safer drug-free alternative. This is not a drug. I emphasize that very heavily. This is what's known as an inert substance. And by that, I mean that it has no pharmacological activity whatsoever. That means that it works without compromising your body and the way it works in any way, shape, or form. So this particular brand is the world's first powdered nasal spray. So it's a powder, it's not a liquid. It's a very fine white powder. We'll show you more about that in a few minutes. Um, but it is a specific grade of what's known as HPMC, hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now, cellulose is everywhere. Any of you who've ever taken a drug or an over-the-counter tablet or capsule will have taken cellulose. Any of you who've eaten in an Italian restaurant will have eaten cellulose. Um, in fact, in many restaurants, cellulose is part and parcel of most of the diet. Uh, it does come from a, a, a vegetable origin, and it has been now proven, and I'm going to show this to you, to be a very extremely excellent treatment for both prevention and treatment of allergic rhinitis in particular. So what happens is the powder is inserted into your nose with a very clever patented device that allows the, the spray to be entered into the nasal cavity, um, and that forms a protective gel layer. So as soon as the powder reaches a moist environment like the inside of your nose, the powder immediately turns into a gel, um, a bit like an aloe vera gel or any, any kind of gel that you can think of uh, that, that you know about. It, it looks like that, and when I do a demonstration uh, to people around the world, I put a little bit of um, powder on the back of my hand. I take a couple of drops of water, rub it into the powder, and instantly, literally in a flash, you see that it changes into a gel. And it can be quite a sticky little gel. So that's exactly what happens when you put it up inside your nose. It turns into a gel, and it stays there for some considerable time. And that means that it can trap uh, all of these um, toxins and pollens that come in through the nasal cavity. It's inert, as I said, no pharmacological activity. It works very quickly, literally within two or three minutes. Um, and so far, the only side effect is you get better. And that's quite a pleasant side effect to have in any kind of natural compound. So. Here's a couple of pictures to whet your appetite, if you like. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see uh, a, um, a, an electron micrograph of the microcellulose powder when it's dry. You can see that the shapes of the particles vary significantly. They uh, are sometimes quite small, but on general, uh, in general, they're around about 30 to 40 microns in size. Uh, there's absolutely no chance, by the way, of those uh, particles going back down into the lungs. We've actually proven this in controlled trials in England, I think it was, and we know that there's absolutely no involvement with the lungs, the brain, or any other organs. So there's no need to worry about snorting 
a white powder up your nose. Yes, I'm going to make my classic joke that this is the only white powder that you can legally sniff up into your nostril. So uh, hopefully you're all laughing across America now. I know there's a couple on the Isle of Man who will be smiling. Um, and anyway, on the right hand side, you can see that after exposure to a damp or wet surface, i.e. the inside of your nasal cavities, uh, just above the little tiny hairs in the lower part of your nose, is very, very moist. It's beautifully um, supplied with blood. And it is the window to your immune system. So you can see there from that picture that the, the white powder has begun to spread. And we really need a third picture here because within literally less than 30 seconds, that whiteness disappears into a, a see-through transparent gel-like uh, compound that when you look at it under the microscope, to all intents and purposes, it's exactly the same as your normal mucus that you have in your nasal passages anyway. Now, we believe that hay fever sufferers have patches in their nasal cavities where the amount of mucus they release is, is reduced. And what this powder does is it covers those areas and the rest of the nasal cavity, uh, and that powder becomes the gel, and that's effectively an extra barrier to the pollens and the environmental toxins that are going to be flying into your nose uh, if you're an, an, an allergy sufferer. And if you're not an allergy sufferer, then normally your mucus would trap all of these things and every 15 or, or 20 minutes or so, they get wiped back down into your gut where anything nasty that's come into your nose will get destroyed. This is called mucociliary clearance time. And inside your nasal cavity, you will probably know that you have millions of little things called cilia, and they beat all of the time. They're pumping, they're beating away. They're little hairs that move around uh, all of the time. And they basically are responsible for clearing all of the rubbish from your nose and sweeping it down into the gut where it can get destroyed. So I have a question here. I'm, I, we're going to leave these to the end, I, I believe, so I'll carry on. Um, this is where I first became involved with uh, HPMC or this particular cellulose powder, which is unique, by the way. Uh, there are lots of different types of cellulose. But this one in particular is particularly good at preventing seasonal allergic rhinitis because of its characteristics, the way it's uh, been manufactured, the way it's packaged, the way it's delivered, and, and its action once it's inside the nasal cavity. Now, I was fortunate enough to uh, pr produce the first ever controlled clinical trial on this product. The inventor, uh, a very splendid gentleman uh, who spent many years trying to bring this to market, eventually found a team who could help him significantly, and they found me. And I said, wow, I'd love to do some controlled work on this particular product, because it seemed so simple, and yet an obvious, logical way to give the lungs what they want, which is good, fresh, clean air. That's all your lungs want. They don't want any of the pollens, any of the environmental toxins, they don't even want funguses, viruses, um, or bacteria that also come into the nasal cavity. Um, and what the gel does is it filters all this lot out, and it gets swept down into your gut and gets uh, excreted in the normal way. So I'm lucky enough to have done and had published the first ever clinical trial, 88% success rate, by the way, for, for patients with chronic seasonal allergic rhinitis. 88% of them said that this was the best product they'd ever used to control their hay fever symptoms. Since then, I've also been lucky enough to supervise all of the protocols uh, in the trials that have been done since then. Um, and of course, I've been able to present at international conferences and at national meetings around the world. And uh, I've been involved in lots of other clinical evaluations of this particular cellulose powder in lots of different areas where you might not think it was an obvious application, but it is. Um, and you know, now is not the time to talk about that, but perhaps if I do a good job today, I might get invited back in the future, who knows. 
So I've been around this compound for a long time. I know how it works. I know how efficient it can be. And the most important thing to understand is that it's not new. It's been around since 1994 in the UK. It's even prescribable over here in the UK. Um, and that will be re reimbursed by the government for treatment of allergic rhinitis. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, it is a special kind of cellulose powder. It's currently available in over 60 countries worldwide. And in the USA, it's now approved by the FDA as a medical device uh, registered product. So that's really encouraging. It means that it can be given to a much wider audience. And that means that more and more people will realize that A, they can prevent these symptoms. And B, if they're unlucky enough to be exhibiting symptoms, they can add this cellulose into current treatment if they prefer, or they can even use the cellulose on its own, and that should get rid of various symptoms, more of which we'll talk about in the next few minutes. So, the nice thing about an inert powder is that it means it has no side effects effectively, and that means it can be used by everybody. Anybody who has allergic rhinitis or generates the symptoms of allergic rhinitis. I'll give you one quick example here. In my study, a lot of uh, people who took part in the trial didn't have allergic rhinitis uh, at all. What they had was a mild allergy to um, the hay in their stables where they kept their horses. So, um, you know, for, for pet dander and animal dander, this is also an ideal way of treating it without using any pharmacological alternative. So the nice thing about it is that children of a very young age can use the product from about the age of 18 months uh, onwards, no problem at all. Obviously, for a young child, you will have to instill the powder yourself, but it's very simple, very easy. It's actually quite pleasant. It's not unpleasant in any way, shape or form. Um, and also, that means you can use it all the way through pregnancy and breastfeeding. So this is a crucial point, because can you imagine what it must be like to be um, seven, eight months pregnant and suffering from terrible hay fever, um, and yet knowing that your doctor is not allowed to prescribe anything to you because it would be far too dangerous for the baby? So now we have a safe, natural alternative that can be used all the way through pregnancy um, and uh, breastfeeding. And of course, it's useful in the elderly as well. I mean, there isn't really a bunch of people that it's not suitable for. Underneath, you can see it's very good for students. Again, this is a major problem. I don't know what it's like in the USA, but in, in the UK, every time, every year around April, May time, we get into exam season. And every year, there's a report about the incidence of hay fever in young people and how it how it seriously affects their performance and their grades. So to be able to have a, a, a simple treatment, excuse me, sorry about that, um, a simple treatment that, that is safe, natural and effective uh, is perfect for students who are trying to concentrate, trying to get their best, the best grade they can. Um, it's also good for anybody that needs to operate machinery because obviously those people if they're treating their hay fever with pharmaceutical alternatives, then they may be getting rather tired, irritable, run down, worn out. And you don't want to be like that if you're driving or operating any kind of machinery. And then the other group is, well, dare I say it, tennis players, athletes, um, footballers, uh, you know, uh, cyclists. You know, sports people have this huge long list of drugs that are forbidden. Some people don't even read that list, apparently. Um, but the nice thing, again, about this HPMC cellulose is that it's perfectly natural. It could never be put on a banned list of compounds, um, even though I believe it does have the ability to help the body significantly because um, I'll give you one example. Lewis Hamilton, Formula One driver. He suffers from terrible hay fever. And he says the worst race is um, uh, we're in very hot countries. Uh, and he does use the UK equivalent sometimes to help relieve his symptoms. I know because I gave him the product myself personally. So it's very good for sports people as well. 
Now, believe it or not, there are 25 trials on cellulose, this particular cellulose, in seven countries. There's an 800-person uh, study population, and uh, also uh, the company that invented this stuff sponsored a three-year doctorate research program. Uh, and they continue to sponsor and uh, support controlled clinical research uh, on the product and how it works. We know exactly how it works now. We have a very good idea of exactly what happens once it's instilled into the nose. Um, and this is, if you like, the equivalent of a pharmaceutical drug, except it's not a drug. You know, to have 25 trials is really quite remarkable for a natural product. Um, you couldn't find many others that have a similar amount of controlled clinical data. So I do believe that it's a great product. I do believe it's got a lot of data behind it. And the reason for that is that most of these publications have been published in what are known as peer-reviewed scientific journals. In other words, the paper has been reviewed and approved by peers in that group uh, and classed as being good quality research and, and, uh, and therefore suitable for publication. Many of these studies have been presented at, at, at uh, allergy congresses around the world, the World Allergy Congress, the European Allergy Congress, uh, both American uh, allergy meetings have been participated in several times. Um, and the really nice thing about the cellulose is that it's been researched on children, teenagers and adults. So we have a very broad range of experience across different types of people and we get similar results in all groups. In other words, it works very, very well indeed. Most of these studies are double blind placebo controlled. You know what that means. I'm sure that neither the uh, recipient nor the researcher knows whether they're giving an active or a placebo. Um, the field studies that have been done on grass pollen uh, have been done on uh, children, teenagers, and adults. We've also done challenge studies where we've actually introduced grass pollen or house dust mite allergen into the noses of uh, volunteers to deliberately cause a reaction and then see how quickly they recover from that reaction, the, the allergic response, by using the powdered cellulose. Fantastic results in these, uh, in these studies particularly. Um, we've also looked at studies on the mucociliary clearance time. So we know that if you're unfortunate enough to have damaged cilia in your nose, your mucociliary clearance time is enormous. And this is bad because it means lots of nasty things can sit in the nose for 30, 40, 50 minutes. And that obviously is going to make you open to infection, coughs, colds, flus, bacterial infection, fungal infections, um, a, a, a disruption of the nasal flora is very, very clear in patients who have poor mucociliary clearance. With the cellulose, this mucociliary clearance time is reduced down to almost normal. I think the figures go from about 28 minutes down to 14 minutes. It's incredible, absolutely brilliant result. And obviously, we've done studies on seasonal rhinitis and persistent rhinitis. So we know that for someone who suffers all year long, once they get onto this particular uh, product, they're likely to get benefit all the way through the year. And it means that there's less chance of them needing what are known as rescue medications, i.e. a drug to control the symptoms. You should be able to control most of the symptoms alone. And if you can't, we have studies to show that you can add the cellulose into existing treatments and see better results. I'll show you a little bit of that uh, in a few minutes. So the key clinical research points really are that you get a reduction in sneezing, you get a reduction in itchy and runny nose, and you relieve sinus congestion. Um, so those are three major clinical proven points. But the most important, from my point of view, is that it gives you your life back. You can get on with enjoying the spring and the summer. You can go out on fresh mown grass. You can go and play golf. You can go and smell fresh cut flowers without sneezing, without getting this horrible reaction 
that means you can't enjoy these things. So if you want to get out in the fresh air and enjoy yourselves, then how does cellulose has got to be your answer that you've been looking for for many years. So let's have a little bit more look at some of the results. Here you can see um, a graphic demonstration of exactly what you, how you use the product. It's a small plastic bottle that contains the powder. It's a patented bottle. Uh, it's got a very, very clever delivery device in it. And there are features in the bottle that are patented worldwide. And you just simply squeeze the bottle, uh, insert it into each nostril, and the powder goes up inside the nasal cavity. And then as the dust mite allergens and the uh, pollen allergens come into the nose, basically what happens is your gel layer blocks the penetration of these uh, allergens significantly by capturing them in the gel. So it's like having an extra layer of mucus. And the graph there, you can see that um, the amount of dust mite allergens with no barrier increases dramatically over 350 minutes. But with the cellulose powder, there's virtually no increase or very little over 350 minutes. So once you instill the product, it works quickly and stays there for a long, long time. And this was one of the papers uh, presented at IACI as a poster. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and it shows exactly what the, the uh, uh, cellulose can do. Now here, this is a, a study on dust mite allergy. This is where the dust mite was actually introduced into the nose of volunteers. And on the left, you can see that the average symptom score for runny nose in particular from challenge, uh, that's when it was instilled, to four and a half hours later, the differences between cellulose in blue and placebo in yellow, dramatic. P equal to 0 0.05. That means if you repeat that study 500 times, you will get the same result. In other words, it's not a fluke. It's a genuine difference between the active and the placebo. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the number of patients showing no symptom from challenge to four and a half hours later, no symptoms at all. And remember, they've had dust allergy, dust allergen instilled into their nasal cavity. So these are again very significant. You can see the difference uh, is 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 amazing between the cellulose in blue and the placebo in yellow. And this was published in a very good journal in um, um, Medical Research and Opinion in 2007. Uh, and by the way, the author, uh, Jean Emberlin, uh, she is one of the world's leading experts on allergy. She's a, a, a complete expert. So on to the next study. And here you can see, look, um, grass pollen allergy symptoms. Look at the placebo. Uh, the symptom score is um, over seven uh, and just reducing below seven. But in the, uh, in the fast block allergy group, look at the difference. A very significant release early, then this continues for days and days and days. So you can see that it's very, very good at symptom relief. And that is all we're trying to achieve, ladies and gentlemen, is to reduce the symptom. And uh, this study was published uh, in the Archives of Allergy Immunology Journal. Uh, in 2014, so that's quite a recent one. Now, moving on. Well, we know we know that children are are a group that are would generally be difficult to treat. No one wants to give our children drugs. We really don't want to do that. Um, and in this particular study, 53 children were recruited between the ages of 8 and 18, and uh, they were uh, they were given. Um, I think, I think I'm right in saying this was the mobile phone group where they were texted messages to take their, their cellulose and to report their symptoms. Um, and they just used one puff of the cellulose powder three times daily against the matched placebo. And the results, as you can see, were that allergy symptoms were effectively reduced, and in particular, reduced sneezing and runny nose, uh, and no adverse effects were reported by, by the children. So it's perfectly safe for young uh, 
children and for teenagers to take. So it's ideal during that uh, heavy exam season uh, between, you know, well, we in England, we start taking exams at eight, it seems to me. But in America, I know it's a bit later. But all the way through, uh, you can see that young people will benefit significantly from a safe, natural alternative. Here we also have a study from Russia that looked at quality of life for hay fever sufferers. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, if any of you are sufferers, you'll know that it's not an easy thing to deal with. You, you dread the spring and the summer season because you know you're just not going to enjoy it. You wake up in the morning and immediately you can feel a tickle in your throat. That's the classic symptom that tells you it's going to be a bad day. And probably by the time you get up, have breakfast and get to work, you're likely to be in a full hay fever mode, coughing, sneezing, runny nose, runny, runny uh, eyes, etc. But here, you can see over the four checkups during this treatment period, <clears throat> every single time, all of the symptoms got less and less and less. So runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, stuffy nose, itchy eyes, and tickling in the throat. All symptoms were reduced over the period of the clinical trial, and they were asked to give a quality of life assessment, and the quality of life was dramatically increased. And this was published in 2011 in the Russian Allergy Journal. So, you know, don't think uh, that you're alone. People around the world suffer from allergy. Um, and uh, another study I wanted to talk about very briefly, again in children and teenagers, um, here, the uh, cellulose was a, a, a applied um, to reduce symptoms and re in, in relation to the pollen load. So here, again, 53 patients, um, 8 to 18 years, as I mentioned before, 25 in the active group, 28 in the placebo, reduction in sneezing and runny nose, and look, improved lower airways and blocked nasal relief. <clears throat> now, that's the difference between going to school and enjoying the day with your friends or feeling miserable and bunged up all day long and can't wait to get out for a break to take an antihistamine or an inhaled steroid or an inhaled nasal spray, which cause side effects. Here, with the cellulose, there are no side effects. It's safe and easy to use. So, how does it work? Well, I think you've probably got the idea. Um, that as soon as you instill the powder into the nose, this powder changes into a gel on contact with moisture. And we know that the swelling velocity of this gel is very important, that the powder turns into a gel almost instantly. Um, and we've done lots of experiments now to investigate the rate of swelling, what that does to the nasal uh, cells. Um, we've done this in physiological saline, which has the same pH as your nose. And indeed, we've looked at how long uh, this action persists. So we've got a very good idea as to how you should dose with cellulose. And on average, we say three times a day is ideal. Now, when you first instill it into your nose, sometimes you sneeze, in which case you need to blow your nose again and put it back in. We'll talk about that in a second. So first of all, the swelling begins instantly and then slows down a little bit. But that barrier is formed immediately. Um, so over that three or four or five or six hour period, the swelling continues to reinforce the barrier. And as you um, see pollens flying in and toxins and molds and things like that, you will then see that you filter all of these out, they get stuck in the new gel layer, and your normal mucociliary clearance Remember those silly beating away like a drum? They will sweep down all of the uh, pollen load uh, right the way down into your gut where they get excreted normally. So the key factor is that the vast majority of pollen never reaches the lungs. So the lungs get what they want, which is clean air. You get to be able to breathe properly, which is what you want. And the nasty ones get swept down into the gut and get excreted, which is what we want. So it's all round, it works for pretty much everybody. Now, 
some of the most exciting work that's been happening in the, in the last year or so is that because the cellulose um, produces a barrier, it's a layer, isn't it? Now imagine if you could hold something in that layer. Well, I came up with this idea about 12 years ago, actually, when I first looked at the cellulose, I immediately realized that you could hold other agents in there, pharmacologically active agents and non-pharmacologically active agents. So here, there's a study recently published in allergy and asthma proceedings on adding in a pharmaceutical drug called oxymetazoline, which is a decongestant. So if you are congested with a cold or with hay fever, you'll probably, if you're a drug person, you'll go to the doctor, he'll give you oxymetazoline, you'll take the drug, and you will get a decongestant relief. But in this study, there was a greater decongestant relief in patients using oxymetazoline and the cellulose powder. Okay, so when you put the two together, you get a better result. Why? Because obviously you trap the drug in the gel layer. That means the drug can sit there and work for longer. It doesn't get removed as quickly because when a drug goes into the nasal cavity, it can be absorbed instantly, much faster than going down through the gut. So this means that you're holding the drug in situ for longer and you get a better result. So we're very excited by this, although we're not into drugs particularly, um, but we do realize that there are lots of natural agents that we can trap in with the cellulose and can have some very, very interesting results. So you need to watch this space because uh, we've been doing a lot of work in the last three or four years and lots of exciting announcements will come, I'm sure, in the years to come. It's a really great time to be involved in a such an interesting, safe, natural compound like this uh, cellulose. So here, just to uh, confirm, the idea of this mucoadhesive property is to prolong contact time between the drug and the mucosa, uh, therefore increasing the local drug effect. So I think we can move on from there, um, because as I've explained, the idea is to slow down the, uh, the activity of the drug so that it can work for longer, and that will give you more relief. So, we now know then that cellulose powder enhances the decongestant effect of oxymetazoline in patients with allergic rhinitis, uh, and one week of regular treatment, that's all it took, uh, carries on for another week after its discontinuation. So there does appear to be some kind of time lag, which again warrants more research and development. And one of the nice things about the company that I'm involved with here is that they realize the benefits of research and development. They're willing to support clinical evaluations of their material because A, it works, B, it's useful for everybody to learn more about how it works, and C, of course, it means we can bring news to the medical community and to the retailers who sell it and to ordinary people who suffer normally from hay fever, allergic rhinitis, and very other, various other types of rhinitis. So here are some of the main points from the other studies. Um, it's very effective in children, definitely. It improves the quality of life uh, in a very high percentage of patients. I would say that's up in the 80s, the high 80s. We don't really see any adverse reaction. Um, it's very safe to use in pregnancy, in young children. Um, it also helps to prevent or control symptoms of allergic rhinitis, so that's seasonal i.e. during the, the hay fever season, and also perennial, where you suffer all year round. Um, and the same is true with dust mite allergy. Um, this, is, this is the excuse to be able to go and get the hoover out and clean everywhere, because um, you won't be suffering by sneezing as soon as you move that dust around. And again, this is in a significant percentage of people. So again, I would expect that figure to be up in the high 80s, possibly even higher, to be honest. Um, and here, as I said, uh, the, the, the allergy season across the United States is consistent. Uh, I mean, if you look at these dates, they're, they're really from April through to November. Um, uh, but 
people can be allergic all year round. So I think it's, it is a year round product, but in these particular seasons, you can see uh, that it's very important when you've got grass pollen all the way across uh, the north of the United States um, uh, from May to August. And yet in January to June, it's all the way across the southern half of the state. Um, you know, it's not, I don't think it's an electoral commission for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. Don't think so. Uh, <laughs> excuse me for that one. Had to get that in. Um, and so, basically, one of the nice things about this cellulose is that it's easy to use. People like it. They don't stop taking it. Um, it it's very, very simple to use. There are no significant adverse reactions. Some people can feel if they take a if they squeeze the tube, the bottle very hard, you can sometimes detect the powder in the back of your throat. It feels a bit a bit funny sometimes, but that only lasts a few seconds, um, and most people never get to that state anyway. So as far as patient compliance is concerned, it's ideal, and this is the practical way to use this particular brand of cellulose. First of all, gently blow your nose. And as you breathe out, place a finger over one nostril and close it. Place the powdered bottle nozzle into the other nostril. Slowly but firmly push the sides of the bottle. The bottle is very uh, easy to push. Uh, and basically what happens is you then deliver one puff of cellulose powder while inhaling gently. Do it, do it outside first and see how easy it is to do. Then close your nostril, do one, wait two seconds, and then gently inhale um, and do the other nostril uh, uh, once you've inhaled the, the, the powder into your nose. And as soon as you've done that, immediately remember it's changing into a gel. You don't have to worry about that. It does it naturally in every patient, every single time. And you will then see the benefit and the relief very quickly after that. So I see we've got a few questions. And um, uh, I think that's probably just the end. Um, so to summarize, uh, it's very good for seasonal and intermittent rhinitis. It's very good for perennial or persistent rhinitis. Um, it can also help rhinoconjunctivitis. It can also help uh, rhinitis where you have a very dry nose. Um, and it's, it may help in asthma, um, but we haven't actually uh, completed any trials in asthma yet. Um, but obviously allergic asthma, anything that causes uh, symptoms uh, of, of an allergy response, uh, like eczema, for example, is the same, ectopic eczema, you would expect the cellulose to be beneficial in that respect. So always have a, an eye and an ear open for that, uh, because it's certainly got a place to play, uh, and I'm sure there'll be research to follow over the next few years. So in conclusion then, the cellulose powder has extensive clinical and scientific research uh, and has been shown to be very effective in prevention and control of allergic rhinitis in children, teenagers, and adults. Um, it's very safe to use. It has no real side effects as such. Um, and it does fit well with international guidelines. Um, and in fact, those guidelines may indeed be um, altered over the coming years to give the cellulose a more important part to play in the treatment of these uh, allergic uh, problems. So I think that's all from me for the moment, but I notice there's a few questions, so uh, I guess it's over to you, Lexi. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Josling. Uh, we, what an incredibly informative presentation. It was just a delight to be able to hear you for the first time and the, your enthusiasm for being able to help people with allergies recover a better quality of life is just contagious. Uh, so thanks so much, and I want to move on to some of the questions. So the first question has to do with will the powder itself help with nasal congestion if your nose is already congested? Yeah, yeah, the answer to that is yes, it will. You need to blow your nose, obviously. Um, but mm -hmm. you will find that it does help to relieve nasal congestion. Um, it may not be as efficient as an inhaled steroid, for example, but in my study, patients preferred to use it to an inhaled steroid. They found that it worked better. So my answer to that would be an emphatic yes. 
absolutely wonderful. And another question, even though your studies were not on molds, we have a lot of issues with mold allergies. Do you suspect that this would also be useful for people with mold allergies? Uh, yes, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Um, some of the other work that I've been involved with, with other formulations, if you like, with, with the uh, cellulose, indicate that bacteria, viruses, and funguses, or molds, as you call them, would easily be trapped in the layer uh, that, the, that the cellulose produces. And anything that's trapped in the layer, even if you've got congestion, um, if you've got congestion, those cilli in your nose will be pulsing and beating a little less quickly. But what you will do is you'll trap the mold in the, in the cellulose layer, and as your mucus and the cellulose gets wiped down by the cilli, down into your gut, the molds will be taken down into your stomach, and of course your stomach acid will completely destroy them. So yes, very good for blocking molds as well. Excellent. So how many uses do you have per bottle? Uh, I, as far as I remember, I think there's something like 200 doses uh, available in a bottle. Um, each each uh, push of the bottle releases a controlled amount, but it's not... Um, it's not it's not a, a dedicated amount each time, so it varies. But on average, we know what the average dose delivered on each on each uh, puff is. So that's that's more than enough to be able to deal with all of the conditions that we've been talking about this morning. Uh, we've had many questions about the name of the product and where it can be purchased. Uh, thank you all for your interest. We will be glad to send you some information offline. We uh, try to keep our Terry Talks Nutrition webinars uh, third party without mentioning brand names specifically. We try to keep them more in the realm of let's explore the science. But no worries, we will send out additional information to those of you who have expressed an interest. Uh, so this is a question uh, I received. It said, are there any tips to helping very young children use this product, children who are not used to using a nasal spray? Do you find that they are, um, do they do well with this? Because it is approved for use for children ages 18 months and older. So if you're dealing with a two-year-old, I think what they're asking is, is it irritating to the nose or will the child uh, be pretty complacent with having this administered? Uh, and ch children on ch in general are very adaptive, okay? So they, they respond very easily. Um, you will have to do it for them, obviously. So you just mm -hmm. literally um, close one nostril, put the, the bottle a little way up the nose and squeeze, and then uh, close the nostril, then do the same with the other one. And generally, I've never, I've never had anyone complain about that. What I have had our, our um, mums who phoned me up and said, this is amazing, this stuff. It works so well for my young child or for more, more for, um, you know, uh, five to eight-year-olds. I had mm -hmm. one, one case, one really interesting case. It was a, an 11-year-old, no, 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 an eight-year-old boy, yeah. And he was on four drugs. He was on four drugs a day. Um, oh, and my. His, his mum was very concerned about that, obviously, because one was a steroid, two were antihistamines, and one was an anticholinergic. So he was really, he's presumably seriously allergic. And, and I said to her, look, I can't enroll him in the clinical trial because he's too young, but if I were you, I would try this now, I'll send you one, and just gradually reduce the dose of drugs over a period of about 10 to 14 days. And she did that, and two weeks later, she came back to me and said, Dr. Jocelyn, I can't believe this. He's just on the cellulose. Everything else has been removed, and yet he's healthier now than he's ever been. So for some people, this offers a route out of the pharmaceutical arena for control simply by a safe, natural, inert powder that comes from the very source that causes the allergy in the first place. The irony of that is very heavy as far as I'm concerned. That's an amazing story because, I mean, as we find out more and more long-term effects of using these prescription drugs and over-the-counter drugs in children, it's just such a boon to have something that 
can provide so much relief without any of those adverse effects. All right, let me just go through and make sure that I have not missed any of our questions. I do have several people that have sent me their contact information. Thank you. We'll make sure we get additional information out to you. Um, we also have requests of how can they view this again. Was this presentation recorded? Yes, folks, it is. Uh, all you need to do is go to YouTube. Give us a day or two to get this uploaded. It may be yet today. It might be tomorrow. Uh, we have a Terry Talks Nutrition channel on YouTube where you can listen to this webinar or recommend it to your friends or send links to this webinar to folks that you think might be interested in being uh, in listening to this information about natural allergy relief. All right. Just want to check through my questions. I've got them coming in, uh, both my chat box and my Q&A box. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody. All right, I think that we have answered all the questions, Dr. Jocelyn. I want to thank you again uh, for taking time out of your very busy day. Are you Where are you right now geographically? Oh, I'm in Spain at the moment enjoying lovely sunshine, but it's a bit windy today. <laughs> Isn't it amazing uh, with modern technology that you're in Spain and I'm in <laughs> the United States and Wisconsin and our listeners are from all over North America, and yet it's all like we're in the same room. It is quite awesome, and I'm hoping that I'm going to be invited back to do another one sometime. Oh, I would absolutely. We already have had requests in our, our Q&A box, so please bring you back. So you've been absolutely delightful. We enjoy your information so much, and your style of presenting is so uh, is, is so interesting. So I appreciate you taking time out of your uh, sunny days in Spain to spend some time with we, those of us that are trapped in uh, cold and wintry weather still. <laughs> so thank, thank you so much. Thank Enjoy the rest much. of your time in Spain. Bye-bye. And thank you Bye -bye folks now. for thank attending. You. Bye, and thank you folks for attending our Terry Talks Nutrition Educational Webinar on Natural Relief for Allergies, um, and thank you for all of you who have said such kind things uh, so that uh, that have quite sent us information about what a delightful presenter. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, for additional information, feel free to contact us, and I hope you'll join us again on Thursday, April 7th with Dr. Adrian Lopresti. Uh, we're going to go all around the world. We're traveling from Spain, and now we're going to Australia. Dr. Lopresti does a great deal of uh, information and research on mental health and inflammation, and some of the uh, products that he's worked with to help people with mental health issues as uh, curcumin. So he's going to have some fantastic information from his studies. I appreciate you uh, being interested, and if you need this information, don't worry, because since you are already on this presentation, you will be sent that information of how to sign up if you are interested. So I thank you all for your interest in natural health and natural medicine, and I hope that this has been an interesting webinar for you. So until we meet again, good health to you. Bye-bye. <laughs>